is found in Jesus, author of our faith. Cause my heart to be in him and simply his grace. We know he's coming from on high, his ever need. Hope for every nation, the gospel of the Lord. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to all the nations and the end shall come. There is hope today and hope for tomorrow for all the earth. Yes, hope for Africa. loving father kings and lords of lord of father we come before you this time O oh lord O oh lord as about your word O oh father O oh lord from pastor mark fill your oh lord may you give us a listening ear O oh father may you help us to receive this word O oh lord help us to make it in practice O oh father O oh lord may you send your holy spirit O oh father so that you may guide pastor mark fill your oh lord O oh lord may you touch his mothers O oh lord as you touch jeremiah O oh father I pray and believe in Jesus, my pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is good. And all the times. Yes, indeed, God is good. Once again tonight, I have a privilege to introduce none other than the man of God, Pastor Mark Findray, who is ready to speak to us with the words that the Lord has inspired him with. Yesterday, he spoke about how to bury the past. And today, once again, he said to speak about baptism. Those of us who are watching online, you can't afford missing this. May the good Lord bless all of us as we sit back to hear the word of God. Most welcome and God bless us. Well, every night we've been giving reports and we've just sensed the amazing blessing of God. You know, I am just so impressed at the creativity of godly Seventh-day Adventist Christians who are using this opportunity, Hope for Africa, to place downlink sites in so many varied places. So let's travel together tonight. Here is a place in Eldorot, where they have set up outside a downlink site for motorcycle enthusiasts. And so these folk pull up their motorcycles, sit on their motorcycles there at Eldorot. 
here in Kenya, and they listen to the Word of God. Now tonight, when I make my appeal for baptism, I don't know if they'll drive their motorcycles up to the screen, but at least get off your motorcycle, come to Jesus. Here is the Zuwani Church in Mombasa, and they set up a site in a slum. And uh, I am so thankful that the gospel appeals to men and women in the highest forms of life. We have many government officials that have uh, accepted Christ coming forward. We have pastors. We have Catholic brothers, which are next Catholic teachers. We have professional business people. But you know, with God, there is no respecter of persons. So I speak to those tonight in the Mombasa slum. When the appeal is given, Jesus has a better life for you. You too come forward and we greet you. And then there is the Galiari Church in East Central Rwanda. That church is packed every night and they have 31 souls ready for baptism. Let's greet Rwanda tonight. Just raise your hand. Rwanda, we greet you. I remember our meetings in Kigali a number of years ago and how my heart just uh, longed for my brothers and sisters in Rwanda. Now here's war-torn central Kivu and this is a camp in the DRC, the Democratic Republic of Congo. Remember we showed you one site there yesterday. This is a different site. And people will walk many kilometers to come to this site. It's at a different part of the camp. They will walk at this refugee camp for displaced persons looking forward to a new life in Christ. Here is Butembo in the DRC, and this site is in a military camp where we have our, our downlink site in that military camp. Three soldiers have committed their lives to Christ, and they now are ready for baptism. Can you say amen? amen. God is doing some just amazing, amazing things. Let me give you two more reports that we don't have on the screen. I want to greet those who are listening to this broadcast in Amharic, in Ethiopia. Let's greet our Ethiopian friends. You know, in Ethiopia yesterday, they celebrated uh, New Light, they celebrated New Year. And so yesterday, because the, our Ethiopian brothers and sisters are on a different calendar, they're actually on the Julian calendar, they celebrated Ethiopian New Year. But those of you that are listening in Ethiopia, you celebrated New Year this week on Sabbath. Many of you are going to celebrate new life as you walk ahead to be baptized in Jesus. Now, the, the marvels of technology are just incredible. I preach in English. We have a translator here at New Life who translates into Amharic. But, you know, in Ethiopia, there are many dialects. There is the Aflan Umaro dialect. So it goes English to Amharic, and then they translate also to one of the Ethiopian dialects in Aflan Umaro. But that's not enough, because there's another dialect called Tigrigna, and they translate into that dialect. It reminds me of Revelation chapter 14, verse 6, that says this gospel. You know, I, John says, I saw another angel flying in the middle of heaven with the everlasting gospel to go to every nation, tongue or language and people group. We are seeing the marvels of God's grace here. You know, I just received, just coming on, a story on my cell phone. This story is quite a remarkable story that comes again from the Democratic Republic of Congo. Pastor Ezekiel, not a Seventh-day Adventist pastor, but a Methodist pastor, decided to watch this net event on Hope Channel in his home. This last week, as I was preaching on the Sabbath, it stirred his interest. Then preaching on the change of the Sabbath, that godly man, Pastor Ezekiel, knelt down in his home and he said, Jesus, this is truth. I'm a Methodist pastor, but I'm going to step out and follow Jesus. He has now gone to our Adventist church he has said, I desire to be baptized, and has walked through the water of baptism. Jesus 
has led that pastor. We're finding God reaching out. Tonight, at the end of the meeting, I'll make another appeal. Those of you at New Life who are considering baptism, I'm going to invite you to come forward. Those of you who were once baptized but drifted away, I'll invite you. And we're going to have thousands of decisions tonight all across East Central Africa and Africa because the Spirit of God will be touching hearts. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, you are the miracle-working God. What you do is beyond human comprehension. Through the miracle of technology, your, your word is reaching bikers who come in on their motorcycles, people in slums, people in refugee camps, people in churches, young people in schools, people in open fields. You are reaching the rich and the poor, the educated and the uneducated. The gospel is going forth. Christ is changing lives, and we praise you for that tonight. Now tonight, may the power of God come down. May men and women make eternal decisions to follow you in Christ's name. Amen. My topic tonight is how to bury the past, the secret of a whole new life in Jesus Christ. You know, before Jesus left this world, after his death and resurrection, he met with his disciples, and he gave his final commission to those disciples. Final words are extremely important. And Jesus said in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 and 20, to his disciples, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things, whatever I've commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Why is it that every night in our Hope for Africa series, we make an appeal for people to be baptized? This is precisely the reason. We make that appeal directly on the command of Christ. Jesus said, go and make disciples. Go and teach the word of God. Go, he said, and teach them what I've commanded you. And when they've heard the word of God, when they've accepted the Lordship of Christ, Jesus said, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So the appeal for men and women to be baptized comes directly from Jesus Christ. Because Jesus says, lo, I'm with you always. How long, everybody? How long? Even to the end of the world. Down through the centuries, God's people have made appeals for men and women to be baptized. Baptism is mentioned more than 80 times in the New Testament. So if something is mentioned numerous occasions, it must be extremely important. Come with me on a little journey to the city of Ephesus. There's a book in the Bible called Ephesians. Paul preached here and he led men and women to Christ. He led them to forsake their idols. The temple of Artemis or Diana was here. And Paul, as he led men and women to accept Christ here, baptized them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And there was a thriving, growing church in Ephesus. Christianity grew there for over 400 years. I visited there not long ago, and I learned that there was a church and the ruins of a church in Ephesus that still had an old baptistry. And so I began climbing over the rocks, began looking for this old church that had practiced biblical, they practiced biblical baptism by immersion in Ephesus. And as I was looking for this old church that dates back probably to the fourth or fifth century, I came across the baptistry. I was absolutely thrilled to find this ancient baptistry and to learn that there in Ephesus, where Paul had raised up a church, they were still baptizing by immersion the Bible way 400 years after Christ. We visited Turkey, a place called Cappadocia. There in this place, it was a place of refuge for the persecuted. When Christians were being persecuted, they fled to this place. And you can see here on this graphic, they hollowed out places in the soft rock and they hid in caves. 
But when the persecution became too bad, they dug underground cities. As many as 10,000 people lived in those underground cities. Now, if you get nervous going into these small corridors, you don't want to go into these underground cities. We climb down corridors. I wanted to see with my wife and daughter where these Christian believers had such faith. There were kitchens carved out. There were places for their animals carved out. They lived sometimes six months or one year in these underground cities. Here's my wife and daughter in one of the underground cities there. Some five, 10,000 people lived underground. But one of the amazing things that is in those underground cities, a baptism. A baptismal place for early Christians underground. Baptism was so important for these early Christians that when they came to Christ to celebrate the new life in Jesus, to celebrate the peace, the joy that they had in Jesus, even in their underground cities, they carved out a baptismal pool so people could be baptized. Now, throughout the centuries, baptism by immersion has always been a public testimony of an inner commitment to Christ by believers. When we're baptized, we publicly declare our allegiance for Christ. We take a public stand. We show whose side we're on. In the battle between good and evil, in the battle between Christ and Satan, there can be no neutrality. There can be no middle ground. Jesus invites us to make publicly our decision for Christ. But somebody says, you know, Pastor Mark, Christian churches baptize in all kinds of different ways. There are many methods of baptism out there. You know, some churches sprinkle babies. Other churches have oil baptism, where they, they pour a little oil on the head. You know one strange baptism that one American pastor did? Now, I know that African pastors would never do this. He took a group of youth, and one day, up north in America, it had snowed. He took a group of youth, and he put them underneath the snow in a snow baptism. When he was questioned about that, that that wasn't the Bible method, he said, well, does it make any difference whether it is snow that's water or water? It does make a difference, the Bible says. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 5, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Repeat it with me. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One Lord, Jesus Christ our Lord. Not many lords, but one Lord. One faith, true Bible religion. And one method of baptism. What is that one method of baptism? We've already mentioned that early churches immersed. They placed people under the water. Would you say that Jesus was a safe guide and if we're following in the footsteps of Jesus, we want to see how was Jesus baptized. Jesus was baptized by John in the River Jordan. And it, the Bible says in Mark 1 verse 9, it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Now notice something about this text. It says it came to pass in those days that Jesus came. Nobody twisted Jesus' arm. Nobody dragged Jesus. When Jesus was working in the carpenter shop of Nazareth, the Holy Spirit began working in his life. And the Holy Spirit began saying to him, Jesus, it's time to leave the carpenter shop. It's time to go to be baptized and to begin your ministry. Jesus came guided by the Spirit. Jesus came directed by the Spirit. Jesus came impressed by the Spirit. And when I make the appeal tonight, the Holy Spirit's going to impress people here in this audience. The Holy Spirit's going to impress people in Rwanda, in Uganda, in Tanzania, in Somalia, in Sudan. The Holy Spirit's going to impress people in Ethiopia, in Kenya. The Holy Spirit's going to impress people in DRC. And that, that sense of 
conviction you have in your heart, that sense of desire to come forward, that's the Holy Spirit placing it in your heart, just like it placed it in Jesus' heart in his day. The Bible says, now John also was baptizing in Aeon near Salem because there was much water there. There's not much water in sprinkling. There's much water there. And they came and were baptized. So true Bible baptism necessitates or needs much water. Jesus was baptized there by immersion in the Jordan River. He went down into the water, and the Bible says Jesus came up out, immediately out of the water. He went under the water, and he came out of the water. Jesus was not baptized because he had sinned. He was baptized as an example to you and to me that we had sinned. He was baptized showing us that his grace is sufficient for us and that when we walk through the water of baptism what we're really saying is Jesus I acknowledge you as my Lord and Savior I acknowledge publicly that you've saved me by your grace I acknowledge publicly that you are the one that I commit my life to now when Jesus was baptized the Bible says the Spirit of God descended like a dove and lighted upon him when you're baptized, the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Now, what sense does it make to say that the Spirit of God came upon Christ at baptism? Wasn't Jesus born of the Holy Spirit? Certainly. Didn't the Holy Spirit guide him as a child as he was working in the carpenter shop of Nazareth? Definitely. Didn't the Holy Spirit guide him as he was in his teens and 20s? Certainly. What sense does it make then to say that the Holy Spirit came upon him at baptism? Baptism separated Jesus' life to a new ministry. It would be new life for him. He would leave the carpenter shop of Nazareth. And to perform that new life, to live that new life, to face the temptations of Satan in that new life, he needed the power of the Holy Spirit. So as you're baptized, it's not like the Holy Spirit comes upon you the first time. The Holy Spirit has led you to these meetings. The Holy Spirit has opened your heart and mind. The Holy Spirit has been illuminating your mind with the truth of God's word. But when you walk through that baptismal pool, God makes you a promise that you'll receive the Holy Spirit in a new, greater, powerful way. There are some people that say, oh, I'm not going to be baptized because I'm too weak. I'm not going to be baptized because I still struggle. The devil wants to tie you up and focus on your struggles rather than focus on Christ's power. And when you walk through the baptismal pool, claim the power of Christ. If you have already been baptized and you're struggling with a temptation, claim the power of Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. Now notice, as Jesus is baptized, Matthew chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, it says, suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Why is it that that voice came from heaven? Because Jesus was making a commitment to go all out in ministry for the Father. When you walk through the water of baptism this coming Sabbath, thousands of you, I want you to sense Jesus is calling your name. This is my beloved daughter in whom I'm well pleased. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. It's one thing to please your husband. One thing to please your wife. One thing to please your brother, your sister, your family, your pastor. But it's another thing to please God. And when you walk through that water, you have that sense, that amazing sense that you are pleasing God. The Holy Spirit enters into your life to give you a new strength, to give you new power. Now, I was interested in visiting the World Council of Churches there in Geneva, Switzerland. And the World Council of Churches has something that nobody else has. They have actually discovered in Africa, in where everybody? In Africa. One of the earliest frescoes of the baptism of Jesus Christ. The African church preserved it for four centuries and you are now looking at the earliest fresca of the baptism of Jesus Christ 
preserved by the African church given to the World Council of Churches. Africa has preserved many aspects of the Christian faith that the West needs to learn from. Many churches sprinkle, that's not African. Many churches poor, that's not African. The African way is to be baptized by immersion and they preserve this fresca of the immersion of Christ, donated it to the World Council of Churches. Believers down through the centuries have experienced the joy of making a full commitment to Christ through baptism. Think about the Ethiopian treasurer. Those of you that in Ethiopia, you have a heritage. The Ethiopian treasurer had been up to Jerusalem to worship. He was a Sabbath keeper. He was looking forward to the coming of the Messiah. He was studying prophecy, like many of you in Ethiopia are studying prophecy in these lectures. This man was studying the prophecies of Isaiah, but he didn't understand them. Just like many across Africa haven't fully understood the prophecies of the Bible. The prophecies of the message of the three angels that we've been studying, where the Bible says, fear God, reverence, respect, obey God, give glory to him in, in, their, in your lifestyle, in what you eat or drink. Many didn't understand that. The hour of God's judgment has come. We're living just before the coming of Christ. Didn't understand it. Worship the Creator, a prophecy. Worship on the Bible Sabbath. Didn't understand it. This Ethiopian didn't understand prophecy. God led Philip to him. And as this Ethiopian was so amazed, this African was so amazed, like African hearts everywhere, he had an honest heart. And he said, if this is what the Bible teaches, what hinders me? I want to be baptized. Philip says to him, by the grace of God, do you believe? Do you believe? He said, I believe Jesus Christ is the Lord. I want to follow Jesus. And Philip led him down into the waters of baptism. Philip commands the chariot to stand still. And both Philip and the eunuch go down into the water and he baptizes him. In true Bible baptism, the one baptizing goes down into the water. The one being baptized goes into the water. The one baptizing raises his hand and says, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This African affluent treasurer for the queen was baptized, giving us an example here in Africa that God is calling us when we hear Bible prophecy, when we know the truth, not to hesitate, but to walk ahead and be baptized. Look, here's the truth about baptism. The Ethiopian accepted Christ, and he accepted Christ's teaching. The Ethiopian, his baptism indicated that he was taking a public stand. The Ethiopian and Philip both together went into the water, and the Ethiopian was fully immersed. Now the word baptism comes from, from a Greek word, baptizo. It means to dip, to immerse, to plunge fully under the water. It was used in early times, like for a woman, if she was dyeing a cloth, she was, let's suppose she had a white cloth and wanted to make it purple. She would take that cloth and fully immerse it. So baptism, not sprinkling, not for babies, because the Bible says, Jesus says, go you therefore and teach all nations. How old should a person be? Old enough to be taught, old enough to be instructed, old enough to know what it means to accept Christ, old enough to know what it means to follow the teachings of Jesus. You say, where did sprinkling babies come in then? It was not until the Council of Ravenna, which is a Catholic council in Italy, in A.D. 1311, that sprinkling and pouring were officially accepted as equally valid with immersion in the rite of baptism. There are many things that have come into the Christian church that do not find their roots and their foundation in the Bible. Bringing idols or icons into the church is not biblical. Sunday keeping is not biblical. The idea that the soul goes to heaven when you die is not biblical. The idea that you can eat and drink whatever you want, pork and alcohol, etc., is not biblical. Speak, sprinkling babies is not biblical. Why is it that God has raised up 
an end time movement to proclaim the truth of the Bible to the ends of the earth, to lead men and women to these eternal truths of the Bible, to prepare them for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what's the meaning of Bible baptism? Baptism is a symbol of our loyalty and our commitment and our allegiance to Christ. When we walk into the baptismal pool, we say, Jesus, I desire to be loyal to you, to be committed to you. The Bible uses the symbol of burial to describe baptism in Romans chapter 6, verse 3 and 4. Oh, do you not know that as many of you as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we should raise in newness of life. So what's baptism a symbol of? It's a symbol that we want to die to the old way of life. We go into the watery grave and we come up new life in Jesus Christ. It's dying to the old sinful way. It's burying our sins in the watery grave. It's raising up again out of the water to new life. I was preaching in Fitchburg, Massachusetts. That's in the, the east coast of America. And one night a motorcycle gang came to the meetings. The motorcycle leader's name was Bucky. Now Bucky had what he thought was Saturday night entertainment. He would go to the bars and saloons. He'd get half drunk. And when he had got half drunk and had drunk a lot of wine, he would take the bottle, smash it over the bar, and he was so strong, he'd go and fight people and stick a jagged glass bottle in their face. He came to the meetings. He thought Saturday night was getting drunk and going from bar to bar with his gang and beating people up. He met an Adventist elder who said, Bucky, you must want something different in your life. And so he came to the meetings. As I made the appeal one night, Bucky came forward, six foot two, over uh, uh, about two meters, you know, strong, muscular, leather jacket, hair down his waist. And as he came forward, I remember after the meeting, he grabbed me and squeezed me and said, oh, pastor, I love you. I said, you, you may love me, but don't squeeze me so hard, please. <laughs> He put me down. He said, Pastor, I want to follow Jesus. I want to, go, go, I want to be done with the old sinful life. I want to bury my sins in the watery grave. And I remember the day that I baptized him. Raise my hand. Bucky, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. There was a smile on his face, a sparkle in his eyes, because he had new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. He went under the water, and he came up to that new life. This young woman abused, abused, but she found grace in Christ, faith in Christ, and came up with a smile on her face. Baptism does not mean you're perfect. The only perfect one that was baptized was who? Jesus Christ our Lord. But what it does mean is you are committed. Three weeks before my baptism, I went to my pastor. I said, Pastor, I'm not going to be baptized. He said, Pastor Mark, he, he didn't say Pastor Mark, he said, Mark, you study the Bible. Do you believe Jesus? Oh, yes, Pastor. Do you believe um, that um, Jesus is coming again? Certainly, Pastor. Do you believe the Sabbath? Certainly. But you don't want to be baptized? Why not? Pastor, all those people in the church are so holy, Pastor, and I'm not good enough. Well, soon I learned that the people in the church weren't holy, but that's another sermon for another day. But he said, look, Pastor Mark, if you look at yourself, you'll never feel good enough. Pastor, he said to me, Mark, look to Jesus. Look to Jesus. Look to Jesus. And I began to understand that I was weak, but Jesus was strong. That I was feeble, but Jesus was almighty. I began to understand that baptism does not mean you're perfect. And if you let Satan tie you up, and let Satan let you look at all your weaknesses, all your faults, all your sins. The reason we come to the pool to be baptized is because we want new life in Christ. We have confessed Jesus Christ, and we want our sins to be cleansed and to live new life. Baptism is not the end of the Christian life. It's the beginning. 
you will continue to grow in Jesus. You'll continue to learn in Jesus after baptism. Baptism does give you a sense of new freedom. It gives you a sense of freedom from the past, freedom from condemnation, freedom from guilt, freedom from being dominated by the sins of the past. It gives you a sense of freedom. It's like a breath of fresh air where now I'm not focused on my, pa on my past, I'm not focused on my weaknesses, I have, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. You are free now to focus on eternity in Christ. Baptism gives us a new sense of spiritual power in our life because the Holy Spirit comes down upon us. Now what happens when we're baptized? What does the Bible say? First, every sin is forgiven. You say, Pastor, I don't understand that. Because doesn't the Bible say if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins? Does that mean I'm guilty to the day I'm baptized? No, it doesn't. But here's the point. Have you remembered every sin that you've ever committed? Have you remembered every time you've been dishonest, every time you've had an impure thought? Have you remembered every sin you've ever committed? No, you haven't. Nobody has. So look, the only ones you can confess are the ones you remember. You can't confess the ones you don't remember. So when you walk into the baptismal pool, here's what you're saying. Lord, count my whole past life as sin. I want to walk into the baptismal pool, and I desire to have every sin cleansed, the ones I remembered and the ones I can't remember, because I want to die to that past life. And so when the devil comes up and he says to you, look what you did three weeks ago, look what you did, did three years ago, you say to him, that person is dead. They died on September 16, Sabbath, in the baptismal pool. The Bible says, Peter says, Acts 2, verse 38, then Peter said to them, repent every one of you. Repent how many of you? Every one of you. And be baptized. How many be baptized? Every one of you in the name of Jesus for what? The remission of sins. So baptism, when we walk into that pool, the old life is dead. Now secondly, the Holy Spirit's given to us. I want you to notice that not only did Jesus receive the Holy Spirit, but it's promised to us. Second, rather, Acts 2, verse 38 and 39. Then Peter said to them, Repent, every one of you, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive what? The gift of the Holy Spirit. Oh, that was just for those back on the days of Pentecost, right? Just for those there? Listen. For the promise is to you and your children and to all who are far off, as many as our Lord our God will call. So the promise of the power of the Holy Spirit to be victorious over the temptations of Satan is given to you, it's given to me. When you walk through that water, the Spirit of God is promised. Claim that promise for the remission of sins. Claim that promise for new power in Christ. When God calls us to baptism and you are cleansed, he promises to give you the power of the Holy Spirit. Every sin is forgiven. The Spirit is given to us, and we're adopted into God's family. Now somebody says, Pastor Mark, when we're baptized, do we join a church? Let's see what the Bible says. Acts 2, we're looking there at verse 41. Then those who gladly receive the word. Are you gladly receiving the word? One thing I love about preaching in Africa, men and women, when they hear the word of God, want to do it. Africans gladly receive the Word of God. When the, then those who gladly receive the Word of God were baptized. That day there were about 3,000 souls that were added to them. I pray that God will give us at least 3,000 souls this Sabbath when we have baptisms all across the East Central African Division. What do you say? Amen. Now the Bible says they continued steadfastly in the Apostles' Doctrine. Did they, were they just baptized and let go on their own? No, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. They had to know it before they, were, they could continue in it. In fellowship, what, they continued in the apostles' fellowship. That is, they became part of the church in the breaking of bread and prayers. And look, and the Lord added to the what, everybody? The Lord added to the what? Church daily, those who were being saved. So these people on Pentecost were not baptized and just left on their own. They were baptized, added to the church. What church? What church do you think they could have been added to? 
Remember, Jesus said, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you, lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the earth. So they were baptized into a Christ-centered, Bible-teaching, Sabbath-keeping Adventist church. Be somebody says, well, when did the Seventh-day Adventist church start? Well, it started back in the days of Jesus. It was further developed in the last days, sure. But Seventh-day Adventists simply believe in the teachings of the Bible. And when you're baptized, you're baptized into a Bible-believing, Christ-centered, Sabbath-keeping Adventist church. In the last days of verse history, God will have a people. Revelation 14, verse 12, here's the patience of the saints. Did Jesus say, go out and teach the commandments? Did he say that? Sure. Will God have people baptized into a Sabbath-keeping Adventist church? Sure. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and what? The faith of Jesus. The faith of Christ would still radiate in the hearts of believers. Are we baptized into a church? What does the Bible say? 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13, by one spirit, we're all baptized into one body. And what's the body? The church. Whether we're Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, we have all been made to drink into one spirit. So whether you're an Ethiopian, whether you're Ugandan, whether you are Kenyan, wherever you are, we're one body of Christ baptized together because we love Jesus, baptized declaring our commitment to Christ, baptized receiving the word from the Father, this is my beloved son, my beloved daughter in whom I'm well pleased, baptized receiving the power of God, baptized moving ahead in God's family, in God's fellowship, knowing the warmth, the joy of fellowshipping with believers. Now the question is sometimes asked, should a person ever be rebaptized? Let's see what the Bible says. Is there any instance in the Bible where a person was baptized once by immersion and baptized a second time? Yes, there is. John comes to the upper coasts of Ephesus. He meets a group of believers and he says to them, have you received the Holy Ghost? Have you fully understand the teaching about the Holy Ghost and have you received it? They say, no, we, we don't understand that. He says, then unto what were you baptized? They say John's baptism. John baptized by immersion. But he, they did not understand the truth of the Holy Spirit. And Paul says, John indeed baptized with a baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord. So here are a group of people that were baptized once by John. They did not understand the fullness of truth, so they were rebaptized by Paul, indicating that they desired to walk in the fullness of truth. This group was baptized by immersion, but rebaptized by immersion by Paul. So who should be rebaptized? Two groups. First, there are committed Christians who've discovered the truth of God's word and they desire now to be part of God's commandment keeping people. They were like this group baptized by John. They had partial truth, they didn't have the fullness of truth. Like Pastor Ezekiel in the Democratic Republic of Congo who heard the messages on the Sabbath and the change and stepped out to follow Christ like the three Catholic brothers teaching Catholic catechism who this last week stepped out to be baptized because they heard further truth. You may be a Baptist Christian, a Pentecostal Christian. You may be a Catholic who was sprinkled, never baptized by immersion, and you ought to be rebaptized. So you ought to be baptized because sprinkling is not baptism. But I'm talking to Christians now, and I'll come a little later to those who've, who've never been baptized by immersion. But I'm talking to Christians who have been baptized by immersion. One of the things that the devil's gonna put in your mind is, oh, you're denying your first baptism. 
were the people who were baptized by Paul denying the baptism by John. Not at all. They were following further truth. And Jesus says, walk while you have the light, lest darkness come upon you. And he that walks in darkness doesn't know where he's going. If you have been baptized by immersion, but yet you have heard further truth and further light, follow the instruction the Apostle Paul gave to those Ephesians when they followed further light and further truth and when the call is made let the Spirit of God convict your heart and come forward but there's another group that ought to be re-baptized as well here are people that were baptized once they may have been Seventh-day Adventists they may have been brought up in a Seventh-day Adventist home and the Bible says in Romans chapter 6, when you're baptized, it is burial and then new life. But sometimes even after we are brought up in an Adventist home, sometimes as teens, sometimes as adults, we drift away. We wander from the church of Christ. But there's always that fondness in our heart. There's always that little tugging in our heart and we hear the call of God to walk through the water again, to recommit again. Publicly, we've disavowed Christ by walking away from Him. So publicly, we now commit our allegiance to Christ. If you've been baptized by immersion and you're a lovely Christian, God calls you to come back. If you've been baptized by immersion and you once were an Adventist and drifted away, God calls you to come back. If you've never been baptized by immersion, you've been sprinkled, that's not true Bible baptism. God says to you, walk through the water. I want to give you peace. I want to give you new joy. I want to give you happiness. I want to give you the power of the Holy Spirit. I want you to unite with my people around the world. How important is baptism? In Mark 16, Verse 16, it says, He who believes and is baptized will be what? Saved. There are two, two conditions that Scripture gives us. First, believing. What does it mean to believe? It means to accept Christ as my Savior, to accept Him as Lord, to accept the teachings of Christ, to believe in those teachings, and, and, and to make a public commitment to Christ, to follow Jesus and declare my allegiance. You know, a number of years ago, I was holding meetings in Poland, in Gdańsk, during the days of communism. And the picture you're looking at on the screen is a picture that just moves my heart every time I see it. The lady in white is a lady who came to our meetings. And like many people that come to the meetings, she said, Pastor, pray for my son. Pastor, pray for my son. Pastor, my son is worshiping an altar to Hitler. He's a neo-Nazi. And, and, and he has all kind of spiritualistic charms in his room. He has no interest in Christianity. What can I do? I said, my dear sister, in those days we were doing tapes, cassettes. I said, just take the cassettes home. Just ask him to listen. He began listening. He listened to the sermon on Christ changing your life. And Peter knelt in his room and asked Jesus to change his life. He sensed that Jesus was coming again. He said, oh, I want to be ready when Jesus comes. He sensed that the Bible Sabbath was, was the seventh day. But there was one big problem. He had a tumor on the brain. He had brain cancer. He went into the hospital and the brain surgeon operated on the tumor got part of it, but not all of it. First, his skull was split here. Secondly, here. And he suffered so terribly. But he said, Jesus is my savior. One day his mother called me and she said, the doctor is here and he's vomiting and vomiting and vomiting. Pastor Mark, would you come? I came. I knelt before that boy with a, with a basin and he just vomited in the basin. His eyes were all green, rolling in his head. His skin had turned color. His fingernails had turned color. And he said, Pastor, baptize me. Pastor, baptize me. I said, I can't take you. 
I can't take you to the river. I can't take you to the church. You're too weak dying. I said, look, the thief on the cross was never baptized, but, but he would have been if he could have been. You'll be saved by the grace of Christ. He said, Pastor, I need you to baptize me. I said to his mother, fill the bathtub with water. Fill it now. She filled it. I told the boy, strip down. I took the boy in my arms to the bathtub. I lowered him in the water in the bathtub, pulled him out. There was a new smile on his face. Now, the doctor said he was going to die that day. He hadn't eaten. I dried him off. We prayed. He said, Mama, could I have some herbal tea? Mama, can I have some crackers? He began to eat. He did not die that day. He lived for 30 days, one month, one month. And I talked to his mother later, and she said, that was the most precious month of my life because I fellowshiped with my son. I prayed with my son. I read the Bible to my son. And when he finally went to sleep in death, I knew that one day I would see him again. And here is a message from a dying boy to Africa tonight. He says, there's no reason to wait. Move ahead. Follow Jesus. Be baptized. It'll be the happiest day of your life. It was the happiest day of his life. And Christ says to you in Acts 22, verse 16, Now why are you waiting? Why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Do not wait wherever you are tonight. Jesus Christ is appealing to you tonight. If you've never been baptized by immersion, wherever you are, get up now. Walk to the screen. I'll be praying over you. If you've been sprinkled as a baby, get up and come. If you have been baptized by immersion, but not baptized into a Bible-believing, Christ-centered, Sabbath-keeping church, get up, walk, come forward now. Let's say, Jesus Christ, I want to follow you all the way. God has led you in the past, but he has more light for you, more truth for you come. And if you are an Adventist, but you drifted away, come now, come now. Just now, let's stand together in commitment to Christ. And wherever you are, let the Holy Spirit convict you. Let the Holy Spirit move on your heart. Let the Holy Spirit touch you now as we begin to sing. If you have never been baptized, come by immersion come. If you were baptized and drifted away, you come. If you were baptized and you sense God's giving you more light, come, you can begin to come now. Come, David, make an appeal in Swahili for them so everybody understands wherever you are now, just begin to come. We will greet you. The Spirit of God is speaking to you. The Spirit of God is convicting you. I wanna pray over you for strength, pray over you for power. Come tonight, wherever you are. If you've come before, come tonight. Let Jesus come and touch your heart tonight. Sauti ambayo mekuita usiku wa leo. Yesu anaitaji atengeneze maisha yako. Inawezekana ulikuwa hujabatizwa kwa maji mengi kama Biblia inavyosema na leo umesikia wito huu tafadhali njoo hapa mbele kwa ajili ya kutoa maisha yako kwa Yesu. I want to pray with you tonight wherever you are. Nice we sing. Siku wa leo nahitaji kuomba pamoja nanyi usiku wa leo. Let Jesus touch you. You just come. Acha Yesu auguste moyo wako sasa. God bless you sister. Mungu kubariki sana dada yangu. Mungu akubariki sana. You hear the call of God. Umesikia wito wa Yesu. God is speaking to your heart. Mungu anaongea na moyo wako sasa. The greatest joy in your life will be that day that you walk through that water. Na unahitaji kujiunga na ukaweza kubatizwa katika maji mengi. The greatest joy in your life will be that day as you go under the water. Ni kwa neema ya Mungu unaweza ukajiunga pamoja na kubatizwa katika maji mengi. You'll sense that God is forgiving your sin. Mungu yuko tayari na hisi unajisikia ndani ya kwamba Mungu yuko tayari kusamehe dhambi zako. Hundreds of you have come before. Na waita wote mweze kuja hapa mbele. Come again tonight. Njo tena njo tena usiku wa leo. You sense God calling you come Kama unasikia Mungu anakuita, unasikia Mungu anakuita ndani ya moyo wako njo hapa mbele sasa. 
God bless you as you come. Mungu akubariki unapoendelea kuja. Mungu akubariki unapoendelea kuja. Speak to somebody first in this audience. Ninaongea na mtu fulani kwa mara ya kwanza katika kusanyiko hili sasa. You drifted away from God. Ume umetanga mbali na Mungu. God speaking to you tonight. Mungu anaongea na wewe usiku wa leo. You may be an Adventist. Unaweza kuwa Adventista? You need to come to be rebaptized if you no. drifted away. Wenda unahitaji ukabatizwe tena mara ya pili kwa sababu ulienda mbali. Let God speak to you. Acha Mungu aongee na moyo wako. And you come just now. Na wewe njo sasa njo sasa njo njo. If you're a lovely Christian. Kama wewe ni rafiki yetu mpendwa Mkristo and you've never made this decision of our Jesus. Na hujafanya uamuzi huu. You just come just now. Na wewe njo njo. Wherever you are. Popote ulipo. Let Christ speak to you. Acha Yesu Kristo azungumze nawe ndani ya moyo. Join these many that are coming forward right now. Ninaona watu wengi wanapokuja mbele wanakuja mbele watu wengi. Come here just come my brother. Tafadhali njoni njoni hapa njoni hapa tuko tayari kuwapokea njoni hapa. Still more are coming. Naona bado kuna wengi ambao wanakuja kule. Tafadhali njoni. Naona wengi wanakuja zaidi wengi wanakuja njo. All of heaven is rejoicing. Unajua Mungu wa mbinguni anafurahia sana. All of heaven is singing. Mbingu yote inaimba sasa. Heaven is singing. Mbingu inaimba. Jesus knows your name. Yesu anajua jina lako. The angels are smiling. Malaika wanatabasamu. When we come to Christ, tunapokuja kwa Kristo, when we make a decision to follow Jesus, tunapofanya uamuzi wa kumfuata Yesu, when we make a decision to be baptized, tunapofanya uamuzi wa kubatizwa, Jesus honors that decision. Yesu anaheshimu uamuzi huo. Oh God bless you brother, God bless you. Mungu awabariki sana, Mungu akubariki sana, Mungu akubariki sana ndugu yangu, Mungu akubariki sana. Do you feel that tugging in your heart? Je, unasikia huo wito ndani ya moyo wako, mguso ndani ya moyo wako? Moving of the Holy Spirit. Unasikia Roho Mtakatifu akisogea ndani ya moyo wako? That moving is the convicting of God. Hicho kitu unachokisikia ndani huo msukumo unaosikia ni ushawishi wa Mungu. Step out right now. Tembea uje hapa mbele ni ushawishi wa Mungu huo. Tembea. Sometimes we do feel weak. Unajua kuna wakati tunajisikia dhaifu and it takes faith to step out. Na inahitaji imani kutembea kuja hapa mbele. But when we do that, na unapojisikia hivyo, God gives us the strength. Mungu anatupatia nguvu. God gives us the power. Mungu anatupatia uwezo. There's somebody here. Kuna mtu fulani hapa that you are hesitating. Ambaye bado unasita sita. You really want to make this decision. Unahitaji kweli kufanya uamuzi huu. But yet you're a little concerned about coming forward. Lakini bado unajiuliza je niende mbele au nisiende? But as you take that step, unapochukua ile hatua, you're going to feel in your heart a warmth. Utaanza kusikia ndani ya moyo wako joto la Kristo. Wherever you are tonight, popote ulipo usiku wa leo, in Uganda, kule Uganda, in Tanzania, kule Tanzania, in Ethiopia, kule Ethiopia, in Rwanda, kule Rwanda, in the Democratic Republic of Congo, kule DRC Congo in Somalia kule Somalia in Sudan kule Sudan wherever you are tonight popote ulipo usiku wa leo Ethiopia 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 you celebrated new life mesherekea maisha mnasherekea maisha mapya you celebrated the new year mesherekea mwaka mpya this sabbath you can celebrate new life na siku ya sabato unaweza kusherekea maisha mapya come to that screen jo pale mbele katika ile screen yako pale mbele njo hapo you bikers watching by motorcycle wale ambao mnaoangalia waendesha bodaboda waendesha pikipiki come to the screen njo pale mbele katika ile screen yako you in the slums come wale wote mnaoishi kule ndani njo you in gomer come wale loko goma njo is there somebody else here that you want to come je kuna mtu fulani hapa ambaye anahitaji kuja wherever you are just come popote ulipo tafadhali njo let jesus speak to you acha yesu azungumze na wewe come for his strength njo kwa sababu ya come for his power njo kwa sababu ya uwezo wake come to be cleansed njo utakaso usafishwe njo we are one heartbeat away from eternity unajua tuko watu wachache tu kufikia umelele one heartbeat away watu wachache tu we don't have tomorrow Hatujui ya kesho. Hatuna kesho, hatuna kesho. Yesterday jana is a memory. Ni kumbukumbu hiyo. Tomorrow kesho is a dream. Ni ndoto. But this moment is yours. Lakini sasa huu ndio wakati wako. Let God convict you. Acha Mungu akushawishi and come. 
Yo. If you're here with a friend, and that friend is hesitating, whisper in their ear, if you want to come, I'll take your hand and come with you. We're going to pray. And even during this prayer, you can come. There's somebody saying, Pastor Mark, pray for me that I'll have the courage. Just raise your hand. Let's pray. Oh, my Father, hundreds have come. Thousands have come. All across the Democratic Republic of Congo, Uganda and Rwanda, Ethiopia and Tanzania, and Kenya. Oh, Lord, tens of thousands are coming. In East Kenya, West Kenya, Somalia and Sudan. Sudan. Lord, we praise you tonight for what you have done and what you're doing. Oh, Father, bless those that have come here and across the East Central Africa Division. Touch them by your grace. Fill them with your love. Help them to know that Jesus is smiling for there is joy in heaven over men and women that give their hearts to Jesus give them your strength and your power thank you Lord for this wonderful baptism we're looking forward to on Sabbath in Christ's name Amen Amen. Our pastors will talk to you now that you've come forward. Let me greet, let me greet the one who's come forward. God bless you. God bless you. I'm so happy for you. Jesus is guiding you. And I know he will lead you. Sigi wa imani yetu ni Yesu Ameni rehemu kwa neema yake Ujio wake Kristo uko karibu Tumai kwa wote injili ya Bwana Habari njema ya ufalme wa Mungu Ita Oh, yeah.
We thank you all for your coming this evening. Tomorrow, as, as we are accustomed to.